uh, co-founder, CEO, and president of Alt Indus Holdings that uh, is an IP company that actually holds the IP for Dixie, California, along with our brand Altai, uh, based in Monterey, California, Salinas Valley. You know, we started looking at this about two years ago, really hardcore, uh, about a year ago we got into this, uh, to create a brand, an edible brand on the market that could be trusted, uh, that was about transparency, low dose, um, single serving, and, and really have a product that everybody knew when you had this product that you'd have the same experience time after time. Uh, we, we met Dixie kind of in the research as we were looking at Altai and how we were launching our own brand. Uh, Trip and Chuck and I met in, in, um, in Las Vegas actually with a business partner of mine had met Trip before, introduced us and we just hit it off. Uh, we were so like-minded in the way that we want to look to continue to elevate this industry and to continue to bring legitimacy and transparency uh, and safety to this industry. And so that's kind of where the conversation started with Dixie. Probably about six, nine months after we started uh, down the road with Altai. And we ended up launching both brands at the same time, uh, both Dixie and Altai. And it was a great synergy. Uh, Dixie's been in the industry for five years. They've gone through a lot of the ups and downs, the different regulations. Uh, and, and in Colorado, they have the ability to have science on property. I mean, their science department is unbelievable to where we were able to benefit from that, where in California, we, we can't really get into the extraction process and some of that science where we had that experience with them. And then my business partner, Mark Ainsworth, who that, has... That's because you're not allowed to, right? We're not allowed to, correct. Extraction is still an issue here in California. And so <clears throat> having the plant materials legal, having the oil is legal, the process of making it from plant material into the oil uh, is still considered illegal uh, here in California. Now with 266, that's changing. Uh, and there'll actually be um, an area there that's written into the bill uh, that, that highlights extraction and, perm and you can actually get a permit for either involatile or volatile uh, extraction processes. But uh, so that's really kind of where, where the things came through. Mark uh, Ainsworth, who's my other business partner, uh, worked for, he had his own um, manufacturing facility where he produced for Whole Foods nationally for the last eight years. He was a pastry chef at Ritz Carlton for eight years. So he understand, understood food science and quality and shelf life. And that's where, you know, really got us excited about coming into this industry also is that a lot of the, um, the products out there were people that were in the cannabis industry that maybe didn't have any experience in, in actual food manufacturing and understanding food science and shelf life and safety mechanisms to where you know, we had all of that and we use cannabis as an ingredient in our product. So oil is, the cannabis oil is just another ingredient. So we look to create a product that could stand up on a Whole Foods or in any gourmet shop on its own and then look to infuse the oil to make sure that we have the medicine for the people here in California. There's no reason medicine needs to taste bad. You know, we, we looked at really going into the low dose of 10 milligrams and 25 milligrams are the only two serving sizes that we have. Um, our, our belief is that that's where the, where the market's gonna go. Nobody wants to take a, a, a 500 milligram cookie and break it into 10 pieces and have guesswork of how much am I having? What is, you know, last time I, you know, I had a good experience, this time I'm gonna have a bad experience. How much medication am I really getting? All of our stuff is triple tested. Um, so when we tell you it's 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams, it's really 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams of active THC. And so we feel that's really the, the future on a lot of things as, as you look at California, uh, Colorado and their regulations. It's all now, it has to be 10 milligram serving size, maximum of 100 milligrams uh, proportion or per container. Uh, you know, it really leads to making sure with the safety aspect uh, and as people get into it to understand, you know, uh, when you talk to a lot of people these days, they talk about how edibles, they're, they're excited, they like it, but they're still unsure on how to actually medicate with edibles. How, what is the appropriate dose? How, am I, how do I know? And there's really a lack of education out there on, on some of this and that's what we're really trying to push is the education level, that consistency level that people can really understand and, and know what to expect every single, day, every single time they have it. As we looked into licensing uh, a product uh, here into California, like Dixie, you know, it, was, it was one of those opportunities to, as we jumped into this market, to have somebody who had a lot more experience than us and knowledge into things and, and, and to be able to benefit from that. So when we started talking with Chuck and Tripp on the licensing things and being able to feel comfortable uh, sharing information where 
going, you know, wait a second, you guys are starting your own edible company, and else we're going to share our recipes and our, our process and the science behind it. Um, and we quickly, you know, we worked through a lot of that stuff because we had the experience in food science and manufacturing, which we, we could also lend to Dixie and, and really help elevate each other's brands. Uh, where they're really strong, uh, we were a little weaker. Where they were a little weaker, we're, we, were, we, had, we had some more expertise. And so we're very big. I come from the restaurant industry where restaurants, the camaraderie between chefs and restaurant tours, we constantly help each other out. We loan the neighbor restaurant a bottle of vodka if they run out or, you know, uh, I just ran out of sugar. You, you run next door to your neighbor restaurant and they loan it to you. You know, there's not a lot of that camaraderie yet in this business and we're really starting to see that to where like-minded individuals, like-minded brands can, can really help each other. There's plenty of room on the shelves uh, for multiple brands that, that are all doing it in the right way so that we can bring transparency and we can bring safety and we can bring expectations into this industry. The industry with, um, in terms of camaraderie ha has, has definitely some room to grow and, and as we can all get together and share trade secrets and, and different things on, on how we do things, um, it, it's going to be great for the industry. And that's where I think the, there's a lot of like-minded people that are starting to see that and come together and say there's plenty of shelf space. Uh, there for the best in class per se that that will help elevate this industry that will help move the the, the movement will help with legislation and, and be part of it uh, versus fight the system uh, and that's that's a big part of, of what we want to do we are very open we have a 15,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Salinas we have we have a license a business license that actually states cannabis infused products we've invited we've had congressmen senators uh, police chiefs FBI, all walk our facility, tour it. Other competition, we've, we've opened our doors to everybody else to say, listen, it's an open book. Let's, let's get together and make sure that we're all doing this in the right manner so that we can elevate this business and we can stand on, this, on the steps of Congress or the Senate and say, listen, we pay our taxes. We're in childproof packaging. We do everything to be a legitimate business and to continue to give patients you know, the medication they need or in other states like Colorado and stuff, adults that are over 21 years of age, uh, an alternative uh, to a way to unwind at the end of a day's work or to relax or to medicate in a way that they see fit. Licensing in the cannabis industry is always a very interesting, um, you know, uh, pathway because there, there's so many things that the federal government still doesn't recognize uh, contracts really in the, in the cannabis industry. So you really have the rights? So is it was going to stand up in court if you're going to do, if, if it ever came to that? So it's really about doing business deals with people that you trust and like. And, and you know, I always joke, life's too short to be in business with people you don't enjoy being in business with or working with. And so that was one of the great things with Dixie and Altai is that we, we have the same mindset, the same goals uh, long term with elevating this industry. You know, but it's, it's interesting because we, we want to share ideas and share product, but you can't go across state lines because they're federally uh, regulated. And so you have to be able to come up with systems where, you know, our packaging comes from Colorado for Dixie, but we manufacture everything in California. So we buy all local ingredients from California, um, all, all accustomed to their recipes and, and in touch with that. All, all of the uh, cannabis and the oil comes from Monterey County and Santa Cruz County. All the test results are based here in California. So it, it's really looking at how you build out markets and being able to trust your brand because as we all know, your brand is everything. And to be able to sit down with individuals and say, listen, here's my baby that I've nurtured for five years and we've created this amazing thing in, you know, in the area of Dixie where they've spent five years and built this brand in Colorado that's so recognized. And to be able to turn that over you know, to us here in California and know that we will we'll treat that brand just as they will in Colorado and to make sure that the safety and the, the aspects and all of the, the manufacturing and science and everything they put into their bars and their products that we'll maintain that quality standards. You know, it's great with the licensing deal too and the relationship that we have with Dixie. As we look at the markets, the difference between Colorado and California obviously are very vast. Um, you know, California has had a cannabis movement for over 20 years. Um, Colorado, you know, as much as they passed us with their recreational or adult use, obviously California was way ahead of them. And obviously the culture, uh, you know, with the growers, everything that we have here in California. So. We spend a lot of time with Dixie, uh, whether we're in Colorado or they come here 
into our facility as we start to tweak recipes to make sure, you know, there's no humidity in, in Colorado or very little compared to California. And so recipes have to be tweaked for that. Uh, also making things at 7,000 feet elevation versus sea level. You know, all of these things uh, are taken into effect as we build out recipes and product lines. You know, here in California, again, you have a lot of areas where people have been uh, utilizing the product for a long period of time. They're looking for higher dose. So we've taken things like the toasted rooster that was 84 milligrams in Colorado and it's 180 milligrams here. Now again, it's, it's scored for 15 milligrams uh, per square. You know, I think when anybody looks at doing a licensing deal uh, with another company is really do your research, look at the brand, understand if, if your, um, your core concepts, your core values are aligned. And also, do you like the individuals that you're doing business with? Because hopefully you're, it's going to be a long-term deal. I would always stay away from short-term things, putting your toe in the water. Uh, you, know, you don't want to go out and build somebody's brand, put, bring everything into a bunch of dispensaries and then walk away from that in a year. So always looking for long-term relationships. Uh, and, and do your research, really dive into things, understand what is, the, what is the, the consumer's feeling about this brand, what is the industry's feeling about this brand, and uh, to make sure that when you, when you go into a, a partnership like this, you're bringing the right brand, the right values, the right um, uh, package and, and, and product to fill a void in your market. In the edible market, uh, you're going to see a lot of growth over the next few years, uh, as you've seen in the last year. I mean, the, the market's, I think, quadrupled in the edibles. Uh, when you talk to Steve D'Angelo in Harborside, edibles used to make up this tiny little portion of, this, of Harborside in a corner uh, two years ago, and now it has prime time space right in the middle as they're seeing uh, consumers continue to move towards that. Uh, if they, you know, especially here in California where smoking, people are so sensitive to smoking for smoking flour. Edible seems like it's, it's, it's not this illegal thing, right? It's, hey, popping a piece of milk chocolate or a bonbon um, doesn't feel illegal, but it gives me the medication, it gives me the relaxation, the, the, the uh, feeling that I'm looking for uh, in a way that I, I'm not, you know, publicly out there smoking or, or um, you know, any other ways you're looking to ingest the, the, the product. I think you're, it's, you know, beverages are definitely an area. Dixie Elixir in Colorado, I mean, it's more than 50% of their revenues is, is their elixirs uh, and their sodas. It's definitely a popular area to go. Again, for people who don't drink and to be able to go out and, and be able to be social with people these days and be able to have their, their soda, their medicine, their thing that's equal to a, uh, a, a glass of wine or a beer and have a Dixie One, which is, you know, 10 milligrams. It's pretty much equi equivalent to a glass of wine or, or a, a mixed cocktail and be able to be social like that in, in, the, uh, in, in that marketplace. So I think you're going to see continued more low dose items, uh, more regulation where you actually know what's in the product, everything's tested versus being Sharan wrapped with a sticker on it or something like that to where regulations going, you know, regulations a good thing uh, in the different areas to keep people safe. So tamper proof packaging. It's definitely going to be a big area that you're going to see things moving down and again low dose as people start to experiment back into this industry and understanding what their comfort level is and to be able to be social uh, and just be able to take the edge off. As we've jumped into this industry it's been interesting. It's been a year in the works. We've actually had product on the shelves now for only eight weeks, uh, both Altai and Dixie and we continue to grow the team. And we have 10 sales uh, reps throughout California. Uh, that, that build out everything and visit all the dispensaries. Uh, we have a manufacturing team right now uh, of about 15 people that work you know, Monday through Friday. Uh, our, our plant's 15,000 square feet. It's all automated. So we have the ability to really ramp up and, and look towards that ramp of, of you know, November 2016 when most of us here think that California will go adult use. Uh, that'll go into effect most likely in January of 18. Uh, but really ramping up for that. And so as we see that, we'll, we'll need to really build the manufacturing side out and make sure that we can handle the, the new influx of people that are very interested in the industry and, and looking to try a different alternative uh, when it comes to uh, you know, so, being social.